There's even more to the story for the JT Tompkins disqualification on the Bassmaster Elites, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, hit that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and let me just say thank you to all the new subscribers, all the people who are interactive on the channel. I really do appreciate you, so thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, click that like and subscribe and become part of the team and family. Here's what we know. JT was disqualified on the Bassmaster Elites on the St. Lawrence River. We now know David Mullins protested and Bass looked in and did a short investigation before giving JT that polygraph. And we know that that information was passed down from Nick Hatfield, who had the cameraman in his boat that was trying to sell those waypoints, and he told David, who then filed the protest. And now we have another video from his dad, Timmy. And Tim has been a professional angler for a long time, which kind of gives a little bit more uh, background in why JT is such a good angler, and because his dad has been on the league or fishing nonstop for years. What I thought I'd do is we I thought we'd watch this video together and as it goes on, maybe I'll stop it the video here and there and we'll be able to ask some questions because I do think there are even more questions now than ever. I should mention I did reach out to JT and we've texted a couple times or we texted. I've sent him five or six or seven questions that I thought would help get the word out or find out more information about what is happening or what is has happened. Now, I haven't heard back from him, and I did say, to be quite honest, I don't know if you should reply to this, and it's no worries if you didn't, because, but the questions were really tough questions, and I mean, I, there were answers that I wanted to know. But if he does reply, I'll put something together quick and easy. But let's watch that video from his dad, and you can find it on his Facebook page. Hey guys, this is just a follow up on JT's DQ at the St. Lawrence River on the Bassmaster Elite Series. So obviously this weekend my phone's been blowing up with calls, texts, and people want to know what's going on with JT. And I just wanted to make this video to answer some of the questions and share kind of the, just the facts that I know without any speculation. And so here's kind of the timeline of how things transpired. On Monday, August the 12th, 24, at 5.30, Bass uh, contacted JT to inform him of a protest made by another angler. Because of the protest, he would need to take a polygraph test after day two of the tournament. The angler that protested JT is David Mullins, and this is what the protest said. Per conversation with BPT angler on his way home today, I was informed that a cameraman who gathered waypoints while taking pictures during the BPT event this previous week of where fish were caught, shared the locations of those waypoints and some anglers that were fishing the Toyota series next week and an elite series angler. So here's the first thing problem I see with this. I think that if there were more than one anglers on this list, those anglers should be, those anglers shouldn't be allowed to fish. I know MLF is doing an investigation on this, and I think and hope that Bass is doing it too, but if there are more than one angler that's receiving these waypoints, those anglers should not be allowed to fish. Not to mention, they should. we should be able to tell exactly if JT was on this list, if he was on this group text or whatever it was. There's people that have that knowledge or that have that information. It can't be deleted. You can delete it, but you can go back into your messages and undelete things these days. So I think there's a way for JT to prove his innocence or possibly prove that he was guilty. He said the waypoints were sent via text and he looked at the Toyota series angler's phone. I think that was a misprint. I think he, they meant the cameraman's phone and witnessed JT Tompkins name included on this list. Now, if I'm looking at this from a defensive point or someone that, or if I was JT, I would say, first off, how did this cameraman have my phone number? That would be the first issue I have. How did someone from Major League Fishing, it's a camera person, have JT's phone number in his phone? Was it his phone number, which was just digits, or did it have him as an actual contact? Because you could, quite honestly, if you're not my son, I don't even know my son's phone number right off the top of my head. I know I have to hit the button and it calls him. We don't know phone numbers like we used to. We store the phone this store the phone numbers in our phones with the contact name. So there's some a little I'm a little skeptical here as is. So let's get back to it. 
So on Friday, August the 16th, JT took his polygraph where he failed the following questions pertaining to rules C32 and C314. C32 states anglers cannot gather waypoints or specific fishing locations in a creek, river, area of the lake, etc., from any source that is not publicly available. C314 states during competition days, anglers may not log on to websites or participate on social media with the intent of gaining a competitive advantage. Now, it's kind of important to note that when asked about whether he received information from a BPT cameraman, he said he did not and was determined to be truthful. Okay, there's a big point there. The question that was asked was specific about that B, uh, that BPT cameraman, and he passed. So if any other things failed, I don't know if that, I'm not sure if that would hold up, but let's keep going. The first question has taken a new form since it was completely legal for all bass open anglers in 2023 to obtain information on the Elite Series scheduled events, as long as it was before they become an Elite Series angler. And hopefully that makes sense. As a, In 2023, as he fished the Opens, he was quali trying to qualify for the Elites. And during that time, he probably knew he was going to make the Elites, but he was allowed to go fish other the places that the Elites were going to this year and get information because he was still an open angler. While a little bit shady, it still was allowed. And that rule has been rectified by Bass. But maybe that's why he failed that part of the polygraph. After the final event on the Harris chain, it was only a rule violation when they are an existing Elite Series angler already competing in Elite Series events. I think Bass is presently correcting this with a new rule in 2024 that states that Bass Open anglers cannot obtain info on any Elite Series scheduled events. JT did receive information while in the Bass Opens for a few lakes, but definitely not the St. Lawrence River. And Slick Johnson has previously posted a video explaining this situation. On Saturday, August the 17th, uh, I called David Mullins. So I wanted to hear his side of the story, and, and after I introduced myself, he first wanted to let me know that he didn't have any ill will towards JT, but that he would uh, be just as guilty as the violator if he didn't turn in the protest. And, and let's be clear, David did not do anything wrong here. I don't want to throw any shade at David. I don't want David to catch any grief. He did what was right, and we have to give it up to him. There are a lot of times that anglers hear of possible infractions from other anglers, and if they're close to him, maybe they don't say anything. But David and these other people that are hearing these rumors or the, the speculation and going to Bass is what should happen. We need to make it clear that the rules are the rules. Black is black is black and white is white. There's no gray area. And I absolutely agree with him that if he has been presented with evidence of a rules infraction, then it is his job to file the protest. So there's no hard feelings on the protest. And all I, all I wanted um, was the number to the cameraman so I can find out the facts. His response was that it was his friend that had seen the cameraman's phone and recognized JT Tompkins' his name and other various phone numbers on that phone that the waypoints were sent to. He also told me that he trusted this friend with his life, but he also refused to give me this guy's name and number. So after doing some calling and some digging, another source identified this person as Nick Hatfield. Now Nick Hatfield fishes for the MLF BPT. Fantastic angler. So I got his number and called him, and after I introduced myself, he, he admitted that he was the guy whose cameraman had set the waypoints to various people. He stated that when he saw the cameraman's phone would attach waypoints in a text to various numbers, it didn't sit well with him. So here's where it gets, you don't know what's right or what's wrong, because if it's just numbers in his phone and not a contact, how do you know JT's number? 
That would be my first question, but obviously he knew it. So he turned in the cameraman to an MLF official. I told him that I absolutely agree with him. It's horrible this has happened and had every right to protest a cameraman. I then asked for the cameraman's number for any proof he sent JT these waypoints. He said he didn't have that information. He didn't want to say any more that he had a brand to protect. He said he wanted to make it very clear that he never said or seen JT Tompkins' name in this cameraman's phone. So where did David hear this? Where did David see this? How does uh, JT out of nowhere in this conversation between Nick and David as he's coming off the water or as they're traveling or whatever it is, how did JT's name get in, uh, included in here? I asked, are you sure? And then he said, this got blown way out of proportion and I never said I seen JT Tompkins' name or number. Now here's the next thing, and he's gonna say this. Who's telling the truth here? There's two somewhat the same stories, but one person is saying, I didn't say JT's name, and the other one said, I saw JT on here, and that's why I filed a protest. So my conclusion after my last two phone calls with David Mullins and Nick Hatfield is, it's obvious one of them's lying. Somebody's not telling the truth. So I then called the MLF official, Daniel Fennell. I mean, I fished there for years, so I knew Daniel. And asked him about getting in touch with the cameraman so we can finally prove that uh, he did not send JT Tompkins those waypoints. And Daniel replied, he, he was aware of the situation, but he cannot give up any information until this investigation is finished. I told him that I understood and that um, he guessed it would probably be another two to three working days and probably finalized by the end of this week. And uh, JT also reached out to Bass on August the 17th to ask for the transcript from the polygraph. So far, there's been no response. Um, pretty much, these are all the facts that I have at this point. And as I learn more about the details, I'll be sure to try to fill everyone in the best we can. Thank you so much. So I don't like right off the bat, and thank you for doing that video. Uh, I don't like that Bass isn't giving JT any more information on the polygraph. I think that should be, they, sh they should give it to him. They need to be very transparent because the tournament's over. So there's nothing that you can do now. All you can do is try to rectify the situation and or apologize for something that could be wrong. But I still think there's a lot to this story. So thank you for watching. But tell me what you think in the comments below, okay? Who do you believe? Who do you not believe? Are we just scratching the surface on this whole situation? Are we dealing with it too much? So anyway, hopefully this isn't negative. Anyway, thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers and thank you.